Hi, my name is Chad Williams and today we're going to talk about functions. Functions is really just a way to really easily use a block of script without having to re-put it into your script over and over and over again. So let's look at how it works. So the first thing we need to do is name our function. I'm going to start off by naming my function square my number. And you'll see why in a second here. Then I'm going to put equals function. And then we're going to put these brackets. Now within these brackets, we'll talk about it in a moment, is our input. And then after that, we're going to put these curly brackets. Now in R, you're going to be getting used to curly brackets because these are basically a way of telling R this is an area of code that you want to keep together. And so the function is going to run until the end of the curly brackets because it knows that's where the function ends. Another thing we can use is something called return with brackets themselves. So the way that a lot of functions work is you give it something and that's our input and that's what's going to go up here. And then you also get something back from the function and that's our return and you're going to get that from here. So we're going to put variable names in there. So my function, I'm going to put my underscore number and then the return is going to be something I'll put as uh, squared underscore number. Now the way this works is we want to use the input and then do something to it and then return the squared number. So based on the name of my function here, square my number, what do you think we might do? Well, I'm going to take the my number and then square it. But then I want to reassign it to this variable name. So I'm going to go squared number equals my number to the power of two. Now with functions, you want to run all of this, and then you'll see that it comes over here in our environment just like a variable would. Now how do you use a function? A function, you use this first name that we named the function, and then we're going to put open brackets, and then we're going to insert our variable here. So right now I'm looking for my number. So what that can be is anything you want, uh, but because we're squaring it, it should be a number. Um, so I'm going to put the number 9. So now I'm using my function name with the number nine, and if I hit enter, it gives me 81. That's because it took my nine, put it here, squared it, reassigned it to my squared number variable, and then gave that back to me. Now, that's pretty interesting, but we could go even further. We could add more than one input. So I'm gonna put powered here, and I'm gonna instead change this to power my number, and what I'm going to change here is powered, and I'll walk you through that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my number and put it to the power of the number that we insert as our powered number, and then we're going to take our powered number and return that. Now, I didn't necessarily have to change all the variable names and the function name, but it's always good to have a, dis a very descriptive name of all your variables as well as your function so that no one's confused when they're using it or you're not confused when you're using it again later. So again, I'm gonna run it so that way now we have our power my number. And so if I go power my number down here, then I'm gonna have to insert a number that I want to be powered and then how much I want it powered by. So let's go nine as well and then to the power of three and that's going to return 729. So what that did is it took my 9, put it here, took my 3, put it here, did the actual math, reassigned it to the powered number, and then returned that to me. Now if I wanted to save this 729, you can also do that. So you can say, well, give me my number back, my underscore number back equals power my number 93. And now what we see is we use the function to directly create a new variable with the result. That's right here. One other thing I should mention is that I did all my functions down in the actual console, but I don't need to do that. So I could just copy paste this here and then suddenly I'm working with this function in my script. So now if I do it in here, it'll do the same thing. Or if I even change these numbers, let's go four to the power of two. And there you go. Now you can do other things too. Um, and it's pretty simple to do functions with whatever you want. I've been talking about numbers right now, but we could do script as well. So how about we say read my script. 
So then we're going to go function and let's add some script. But so first underscore word, then second underscore word, and then we're going to do our curly brackets. I'm going to write print. Now we haven't really talked about print yet, but what print does is it just puts whatever I'm putting into print into my console here. So if I write print, hello, it's gonna print it into my console, hello. So that's pretty simple what it does. Um, and here we're gonna print something. So what are we gonna print? So maybe first word with the second word. So what I can do is I can concatenate those. So C, first underscore word by second underscore word. And then let's add that to a variable. So combined underscore words equals that. And then we can print this. And then even if we wanted to, we can even return this to us as well. So it'll tell us what it is, but it'll also return it to us so we can put it into a variable. So now I'm gonna run this and we get read my script. And I can write down here, read underscore my underscore script and then let's put two words chad comma williams that's me and i'm going to add this to a variable because what i return let's put it to uh, a new variable underscore my name equals this so again just make sure that we've ran the function although i already had and now i'm going to run it and what we get is it says chad williams and I get my name as two different elements. We talked about variables in another video, so you can look into that, and there we go. Now, not only can we do functions with simple math, but we can also do it with string, and the further we get into this course, the more obvious it'll be how complex these functions can be and how useful they might become. So that's a pretty quick overview of functions. And like I said, we're gonna really get into elaborate complex script in the future. And we're gonna maybe not see too much use for this right now with our basic knowledge of R. But the more we go through these tutorials, the more we're gonna see, yeah, okay, functions are gonna really help us out. And again, functions, the idea is so that you're not gonna rewrite the same code over and over again. And that also helps us because if we don't want to change code, so if we want the same code over and over again, and we want to change an element of that code, if we've just copy pasted it over and over again, we're gonna to have to fix it up every time. But then if we use a function, we just have to fix the function and then it fixes all of them. Anyways, thanks for watching.